What is going on guys? It's AppleCritics from AppleCritics.com and I have another special video for you guys. Now this video is going to be on the camera on iOS 14 as there's many features that not really too many people are talking about. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into this video. So going into the camera app, on the surface level you're going to see it just looks normal and there's not too many new features. But then you're exactly wrong uh, because there's actually a lot of new features uh, that are embedded within the camera app in iOS 14 and in this video I'm going to be taking a closer look at them. Uh, so the first feature that you're probably going to notice is that green dot. Uh, so the green dot means that the camera app is open. Uh, so you can see that the camera is being viewed so that is why that green dot is there. Now if we were to go into a third party app so let's say for example we're in the Instagram app and we have all these Instagram features, you can see that the green dot is also there. Now if we go into the control center, you're going to see that it will say Instagram right there uh, as we are currently in Instagram and it says that we're using the camera. Now if we go to the control center again, you're going to see it will say Instagram recently. So that's new that you have recording indications uh, in the camera app. So now what I can actually do is just switch it to video now and we can start a video uh, and essentially normally what would happen is that there's going to be an orange indicator right there uh, because that orange indicator actually means that you're also using the mic. Uh, so that is the reason for the orange indicator. Now if we were using an iPhone 11 Pro or an iPhone 11, uh, what would actually happen is that we would have the night mode indicator. Uh, so that's exclusively for the iPhone 11 uh, and the iPhone 11 Pro. So that night mode will just actually help you take better uh, pictures in low lighting, of course. Now we do have the feature of the quick take video. Uh, so to do that, all you have to do is just simply hold the volume down or hold the volume up. So if we do that, you can see that we're now recording a video uh, simply just by holding it down and now you can see it stopped recording so you can just hold down the volume down button for example and now you can see that I'm currently recording just like that and now if I let go it stops. Uh, so that's the quick take video and you can do that with the volume down or volume up volume rocker. Now you can also use the volume buttons for burst mode so all we have to do to do that is just simply go into settings. And then we have to go into camera and then we go into camera and now you're going to see that I have all these options here. So all I have to do is just simply tap on where it says use volume up for burst and you just simply have to just enable it. Uh, so now you can no longer use the volume uh, button for the quick take video. It can only be volume up for burst. So now if we do the volume up, you can hear we're doing a burst right there. And you can see that it was just doing the burst mode just right there. Uh, but we can still use the volume down for quick take video. So you can see that you can both use them. You just can no longer use the volume up anymore for the quick take video. So that's really interesting. Now that quick take video is just a very crucial and key feature uh, and it's highly recommended just in case you quickly want to take a video of something and you can just quickly trigger it. Now when we go into the video section, what we can actually do is change the video resolution simply by tapping on it. So currently it says HD and 30 frames per second. Uh, so once again, we just have to be in the video tab. And now what we can do is simply tap and now we're in HD 60 frames per second. And then you can tap again uh, back to HD 30 frames per second. Now what we can also do is just change the resolution uh, in the settings. So we can record video at 1080p by 30 frames per second, but we can actually change that to at least 4K 60 frames per second. So that was just the highest I had it at, but if we change it to let's say 4K 60 frames per second. So let's say for example, I change it to 4K 60 frames per second. You can see that we can go through all of them. So 4K 24 frames per second, and you can see we have all the different options. So that is what we can do. Now just as a reminder, the higher the video format, the more it takes. So with one minute of video, it is 400 megabytes. So that's something to be cognizant of and just to keep in mind. Now once you tap on that boomerang, uh, you can see it'll bring us an array of features. So essentially what we can do with it is that we can lock the exposure controls for photos and videos. Uh, so all I have to do is just simply uh, tap on that. Then we can have the option for exposure controls. 
So we can just set a specific exposure controls uh, for a photo session or video session. And then what we can actually do is adjust it by just going back into settings. And then once we're in settings, and then we can go into preserve settings. And then we can just preserve exposure adjustment. So uh, it will preserve the exposure adjustment rather than automatically reset. And it always will show the exposure adjustment indicator. So that is the exposure adjustment feature. Now going back into the camera settings, you can see that we have all these formats right here. So we have the high efficiency uh, format or the most compatible. So uh, that is the HEIC file size uh, for photos. Uh, and that's mostly for live photos. And that's just a unique format. Then you can also choose the most compatible, which would be the normal JPEG uh, file format. Now we once again have the record video in different uh, frames per second in different formats. And we also have the record slow-mo in a specific format. Uh, we have the record stereo sound. We can also preserve the settings of the camera mode. Uh, so it just preserves the last mode uh, such as video rather than just automatically resetting to photo. So that's just normally when you just quickly open up the camera app, it's always on the photo section, but you can just put it back to the video section. Uh, so it'll just restore it to the last mode. You also have con creative controls, uh, which you will use the last filter aspect ratio, light or depth or setting. And then you have that feature. And then we have the exposure adjustment, of course, and you have the live photo. So you can just preserve to automatically have the live photo turned on. Now we do have the composition option of mirror front camera. So essentially what that means with mirror front camera is that we can just go ahead and take a selfie. And then when we take a selfie, normally you'll see that it'll be mirrored. So if we take a look at the selfie, you'll see it'll be the opposite way. But if we go ahead and turn on mirror front camera, you're going to see that the selfie will be the same way. And you can see that it'll be flipped. So it won't be uh, the exact uh, opposite of how it was. So you can see just like when normally when you take a picture in the mirror and you have uh, certain letters on your clothing, you'll see that it'll be flipped. But now it'll be the same way with the mirror front selfie feature. Now we can prioritize faster shooting so that'll just intelligently adapt image quality when rapidly pressing the shutter. And then we can have the smart HDR and then we can just once again keep the normal photos. So smart HDR will just intelligently blend the best parts of separate exposures into a single photo and save the normally exposed photo in addition to the HDR version. Uh, so that's basically what you can do with the camera in iOS 14. It's very verbose, has a bunch of new features. So hopefully you enjoyed this video on the camera on iOS 14. If you did, be sure to smash that like button down below so know you watched. Also be sure to check out all the videos on my channel. Be sure to check out AppleCritics.com for Apple News News and more. And also check out my social media profiles on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. My username there is AppleCritics. And be sure to subscribe for more great content. And thanks for watching.